Hello and welcome back to BioClass Bytes. In this video, we are going to talk about Earth as a system. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. These are the unit and lesson titles for this video series. And in this video, we are going to focus on Earth as a system. Before we continue, I recommend that you watch this video from Kurgizas entitled Everything You Need to Know About Planet Earth. I will provide the link in the description below. These two are very famous images of our planet. So the first one is called Earthrise, um, taken by the Apollo 8 astronauts in December 1968. So this is actually a very classic image that led the people on, um, on our planet back then uh, to see our planet differently. And this one was taken in 1972, uh, December, by Apollo 17. Um, and this is called the blue marble, uh, describing the swirling patterns of clouds in our atmosphere. So these two are very important images because it reminds us of how, of how small and fragile our planet actually is and the importance of the uh, synergy and interactions of the different subsystems uh, to, to ensure um, the survival of life on our planet. Earth is considered a system, and we define a system as an organized group of parts that work together to form a whole. Examples of that would be organ systems of the human body. So if we have a digestive system, that's, that's considered a group of um, organs that work together with the same function. So the system is the digestive system, but it is made up of parts such as the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, small large intestine, rectum. It also has accessory organs such as pancreas and liver and gallbladder. So it is, a system is made up of parts that work together to form a whole. So if we, def, if we define Earth as a system, it means that it is um, a whole made up of parts that work together. Earth as a system can be categorized into two. First, in, with respect to energy, we can consider Earth as an open system. It means that we are still receiving energy outside our planet. So, energy in the form of light and heat enter and leave the system. So, here, if we consider this system as our planet, in terms of um, energy, in terms of energy, we are still receiving energy coming from the sun. Okay? And we are also giving off energy, uh, giving, giving off heat and energy um, as they leave our planet. So in terms of um, energy, the Earth is considered an open system. We receive energy and we give off energy. So there's an exchange of heat energy um, in that respect. Um, however, in terms of matter, in terms of matter, Earth is considered a closed system. Meaning to say, we do not receive um, matter from space and we also do not give, live out or give out um, uh, matter back into space. So this, this um, matter are recycled or all throughout the system through the organisms. So what does it mean? Um, uh, for, in terms of, for example, material, materials such as soil, we do not get materials from outer space. All the soil that we have here on Earth, they are the same soil that we've been recycling over and over for hundreds and thousands of years. The, the rocks that we see outside right now, those are the same rocks that have undergone the rock cycle from igneous to metamorphic to, to sedimentary, back to metamorphic, back to igneous. Those have been the same rocks. The, the water molecules, water, the rain that we experience now, those are the same water molecules that has been undergoing the water cycle since the time of the dinosaurs, since even time before that. So, we do not get matter from outer space. Um, however, if you're going to ask me, uh, Miss, how about, uh, no, uh, how about meteors and meteorites and all those? So, even if we are um, bombarded with meteors and meteorites, and even if they manage to reach Earth, most of those um, particles have burned up in the atmosphere and whatever lands on our surface, whatever lands on the Earth's surface um, is, is negligible or they, they are not counted because they are so few in number. So we do not exchange matter with um, outer space. So everything that we have here, 
soil and water and molecules and, and elements, all the matter that we have right now, it is recycled through our system. Here is another diagram that explains the duality of the Earth system. So again, in terms of energy, we are considered an open system because we receive energy from the sun in the form of sun rays, in the form of UV rays. We, our organisms, plants and animals use that form of energy in the form of photosynthesis, in the form of cellular respiration, and we also radiate heat back into um, space. Okay, so in terms of energy, it's, we are considered an open system. We receive, we process, we utilize, we recycle, and then we give it back to outer space. However, in terms of matter, the Earth is considered a closed system. It means that nothing, we, do not, we do not get matter or materials or, or we do not get matter from outer space, even if we... We are bombarded with meteors and meteorites and all those. Um, they burn up fast in the atmosphere and whatever lands, very, very few in number, very few in amount, almost negligible. So everything that we have right now, soil, rock, water, elements, uh, molecules, all of those are cycled in our geological cycles, in our rock cycles. So, those are the, the same molecules we've had, the same soil molecules, rock molecules, water molecules that we've had um, hundreds and thousands of years in the past. And we will continue to recycle them as time moves forward. So, if we consider Earth as a system which is made up of parts, th these are the subsystems of our planet. So, um, the subsystems are the biosphere, hydrosphere, geosphere, and atmosphere. Biosphere refers to that region of the Earth that's capable of supplying, supplying life or, or um, nourishing life, and those refer to your living organisms. Hydrosphere, this is the water component of the Earth. Atmosphere, this is where the air and gases are found. And geosphere, this is where the, the solid parts of the Earth are found. So first would be the biosphere, of course. Bios... Um, means living organisms or living or life. So this is the collection of all life forms in our planet, distributed in the different biomes or ecosystem. Uh, these are examples of those biomes, deciduous forest, temperate grassland, savanna, tropical rainforest. And we define biosphere as the global ecological system or the, or the, or the uh, collection of all the ecosystems on the world, wherein there's an integration of living things and as they also interact with the non-living components such as the lithosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere. So examples of the biosphere are your plants and humans and insects, uh, microbes, and all that. If you remember your lesson in biology on levels of organization, so biosphere is found at the end. So you start off with cells, um, organs, uh, organ system, individual, so that's one individual, then several individuals of the same species make up a population and if that uh, population interacts with other populations such as population of moose and population of rabbits and population of owls you, and trees, you form a community. And if that community interacts with the physical environment such as the mountain and water and soil, so that becomes an ecosystem. So, um, uh, an ecosystem that occupies a, a particular a particular um, area or or location that's by those are biomes so consistent ecosystem in in a specific area biomes and then all the biomes in the world make up your biosphere so this is the first component or first subsystem of earth the next subsystem is the hydrosphere so this contains the planet's water water whether it is in the oceans lakes or rivers so it also consists water vapor that's, that's, uh, that condenses to form clouds, and um, they have a close interaction with the height with hydrosphere. So other factors such as, such as ocean temperature changes when the air temperature fluctuates. So examples of your of your hydrosphere are your ocean lakes, um, polar ice caps, rain and snow. So both fresh and marine waters um, are are included here. Uh, similar to hydrosphere, it's connected to it is the um, uh, cryosphere. 
So this is the, the region of the earth that's solid or frozen water. So those are found in ice caps, ice in the ocean, in the permafrost, um, and, and frozen ground. So this uh, shows us the different regions of the ocean. So uh, we start off with the topmost layer, the, the illuminated zone. We call it epipelagic, which means above the open above the open sea. So there, then right. So this is where most of the fish and living organisms are found. So floating seaweed, jellyfish, tuna. So this is where they live, close to the surface. Below that is mesopelagic, meso middle, pelagos open sea. So there's still pen some pen penetration of light on the surface. Photosynthesis. So in both these two layers, photosynthesis happens a lot because light can still penetrate the water and the algae can still perform photosynthesis. So examples of animals that live here are swordfish, squid, wolfish, cuttlefish. So some some organisms here can are bioluminescent, so they can they can um, they can uh, radiate their own light. Okay. So below that is quite um, a large region, the bathypelagic or deep ocean. So here the ocean is pitch black. Um, you, you have here your bioluminescent organisms such as lanternfish. No living plant life it could exist here because light cannot penetrate the water. So po photosynthesis is not possible. So other examples are your giant squid, dumbo octopus, um, and sperm whales. Below the bathypelagic is the abyssopelagic region, bottomless open sea. So here, very few creatures could survive the cold temperature and high pressure and complete darkness. So very few organisms can live here, basket star, cucumber, sea pig, marine arthropods. So they are mostly transparent and eyeless because they do not need eyes because how can they see when there's no light? Below that is hadopelagic or the zone or the underworld zone of the open sea. So this zone is mostly unknown. We're still exploring it. Very few species are known to survive here. Um, so this is where many, or, uh, many organisms can survive here only in the hydrothermal vents. Um, so uh, here, uh, very few organisms can survive and it's very dark here. And we, uh, marine biologists are still trying to explore this region of the sea. Okay. So these are the different layers or the different regions of um, the sea and oceans. So I have several recommendations about the hydrosphere. So this one is actually a clip from the movie The Abyss by James Cameron. This is, this is one of my favorite uh, movies. So here the lead character Bud jumps into the abyss and you will see how far he has to travel just to reach the bottom. So... Um, you can, you can check out this video. Uh, links in the description below. This one is from TED Ed, How Big is the Ocean? Um, I will provide the links down below. So this will uh, show us uh, how big and vast and how deep um, our oceans are. And then this one is a fun interactive website from Neil, Neil R. Agarwal, wherein he tries to show in this uh, in, through his work in his animation the, the changes of the organisms as you go deeper, deeper into the sea. I recommend that you watch these two very interesting videos, one from Ted Ed entitled The Otherworldly Creatures in the Ocean's Dif Deepest Depths. Okay? And this one is from Kurgizaz, What's Hiding at the Most Solitary Place on Earth, the Deep Sea. So please take the time to watch these videos, very inform informative. Uh, you will learn a lot about our oceans and I'll provide the links in the description below. And this one is from BuzzFeed, a, a, a fun visualization on how the Little Mermaid Ariel would look like um, under the different uh, regions of, or levels of, this, of the water or of the ocean. So you could check those out. Next would be the atmosphere. So this is perched above other subsystems. So this um, layer of atmosphere um, is, are made up of the following gases, oxygen, nitrogen, water vapor, ozone, and, and this is where you know wind, um, are for, wind or wind currents are formed. This is essential to life um, because it contains all those layers that inter interacts with other subsystems. So um, although oxygen is considered a critical gas, it's only found in the lower atmosphere and there's only around 21% oxygen, while most are 78% plus 
made up of nitrogen. So the atmosphere is said to be always in motion, responding to the temperature changes that occur below it. So these are the different uh, layers of the atmosphere. You have tackled this in grade 7, I'm sure. So the one that we're, we are, where we are living, where we are breathing in oxygen, that's the troposphere, followed by the ozone layer. Those are uh, That's the layer of um, the atmosphere that protects us from harmful radiation uh, from the sun and from outer space. Above that is the stratosphere. And I, this, is, this is the region where planes and... and flight jets could um, could stay and could fly. Then above the stratosphere uh, is your mesosphere. So this is where most of those meteors could would burn up. And then right above that thermosphere, this is the outermost region of the of the atmosphere that separate us, separates us from exosphere. So that's part of um, outer space already. Okay, so the last um, biosphere would be the geosphere. This, res this refers to the solid parts of the Earth. So, um, it's also um, coined as a lithosphere. Um, however, the lithosphere only refers to the uppermost layers of the Earth, right? including the oceanic and continental crust. So, the geosphere is the land part of the Earth. So, this includes the core, mantle, crust, continents, ocean floor, mountains, and rocks, metals, asphalt, and bricks. So, geosphere is the solid part of the Earth. That ends our video. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. Till next time, goodbye!